Hello and welcome my dear friends. This is the channel for those people who love the truth. Every time you come on here, you can be assured that you will hear the truth. I am Vera Urubo. And today we want to talk about something that's very, very important. But before I do that, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so and like the video. Click the notification bell. I'd like to hear from you in the comment section. All right. Now, so today we want to talk about rules of engagement for successful marriage. Rules of engagement for successful marriage. Now, first thing I want to say to you is that the primary purpose of every marriage is to serve. Every partner must go into the relationship with a mindset of service. So it's not a case of, ah, thank God, uh, I, I don't get husband. He'll be bringing me tea in bed, he'll be doing all of those things you read from Cinderella's story. Okay? Or, I, I thank God, I now have a wife, she will wash my clothes, she will make my bed, she will cook my meals, she will... That's not the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage is to serve. And so there is an overriding question, an overriding thought that must always be on your mind. How can I make the life of this person I married better? How can I make his or her life better? Now, the truth about it is that eh, God desires that when you get married, the two people coming together, he said two are better than one. The two people coming together, there should be an appreciation in both of their lives. Because this one is looking out for this and the other is looking out for the partner. That's how it's supposed to work. Okay? That's how it's supposed to work. Healthy marriages are possible. They are possible. But it's just that they require some work. Unfortunately, we have a generation that doesn't want to work on anything. But if you are going to have a successful, a truly successful marriage, you need to agree that you need to do some, some work. And to be honest, it's, it's, it's work done in love. All right? In Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9, he said, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So there's labor that is involved. There's labor involved. In getting that marriage where it's supposed to be and for two of you maximizing your matrimony all right now so let me also quickly say that no matter how good your marriage is there will be disagreements okay so that there are disagreements in a marriage doesn't mean that it's a bad marriage the problem is just when people don't know how to engage with their disagreements you must get to the point where you agree to disagree Okay, and the marriage is forging on and becoming all that God desires for it to be. All right. Now, but um, just as in the military, every marriage must start with rules of engagement. So if you are engaged now or you are in courtship and stuff like that, and you have not yet uh, gotten into your rules of engagement after listening to this video and I want to encourage that you listen to all five because I'm going to bring them one after the other so that I don't make this video too long alright so I'm going to be talking about five rules of engagement as soon as you get engaged two of you need to sit down and discuss these rules of engagement this is how it's going to operate in our home all right if you're already married and you didn't do that before your marriage then you can sit down now and discuss today let's start with rule of en rule of engagement number one number one no insults no harmful words no abusive words no causes rule of engagement number one no matter what happens in this house nobody go insult another person no matter what happens in this house, nobody will use harmful words. Nobody will use hurtful words. This is very important because the Bible has a lot to say about it. In Colossians 3 verse 8, the Bible says, But now you must get rid of all these things. 
anger, passion, and hateful feelings. No insults or obscene talk must ever come from your lips. No insults, no obscene talk must ever come from your lips. So, uh, let me tell you, the word of God will always be correct. God is always right. And he said, if you are going to have that good, blissful marriage, no insults, no obscene talk, must. It doesn't matter the provocation. No insults. Then in Ephesians 4.29, it says, do not use harmful words, but only help full words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. Now let me ask you, how are you engaging in your home? The things you say, do they do good to your, your spouse or your partner? Or after you talk, eh, <laughs> the, the other person won't die. If that's the kind of marriage you have and something is telling you, yeah, can pepper around. Now, if you are doing that, that is that's insanity. Because you, you want your marriage to be to be happy and yet you won't pepper the other person. It doesn't even make sense. Alright? Now, so you need to be careful about what you are saying. Now, it, it further says in that Ephesians 4, get rid of all bitterness, passion, anger, no more shouting or insults, no more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. Oh, I love it when it says, no shouting. I mean, just imagine a home when there is no shouting. Wow, that's almost heaven on earth. But I can tell you that it's possible. Oh, it's absolutely possible. We've been married for 34 years and by the grace of God, I can testify, no shouting. No shouting, no insults, no insults, no shouting. I mean, it can be a Christian home where people are screaming at each other and neighbors are running, ah, no kill ammo, ah, yeah, yeah. no now, no now, no shouting. No obscene words must be heard in your home. Then if you look at the uh, examples of Jesus in that Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. I always love reading out of this portion of scripture. Um, in the message translation, it says, Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are really doing themselves a favor since they are already one in marriage. Now, I want you to note something. He said, the words from Christ evokes the beauty of the church. See, as partners there, eh, your words ought to evoke each other's beauty. Your words shouldn't bring out the worst in your partner. Your words should bring out the best, the best in your partner. So it's important how you are talking at home. Now, so you can't use anger as an excuse for misbehavior in your home. Ah, you know, it is, uh, my family, we are just uh, angry people. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Anger is not the fruit of the spirit. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Anger is so dangerous that, you know, it was anger. Anger was one of the reasons why Moses did not enter the promised land. I, I don't want to go there. So anger is dangerous. You can do and say terrible things in a fit of anger. And a wise man does not yield himself to anger. If the situation is getting tense, just walk away. And by the time the two people have calmed down, you can now sit down and discuss the issue. Now, no causes. What is a cause? A cause is uh, there are words that are spoken with the intention of harming a person. And let me tell you, causes are no jokes. These are spiritual realities. How can you say to your husband, 
it will go better for you. You will never do well just because he did something at that moment, okay, and you were angry and you turned it into a cause. Do you know what you are doing? In fact, somebody said the other time, wait till you come this UK come find no go ever touch your hand. Ah, madam, do you know that after two of you have reconciled, the words are still hanging over your lives in the realm of the spirit. And you'll be wondering, we don't know where this delay is coming from. We don't know where this is coming from. I know where it's coming from, the cause from your mouth. Okay, look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 18:20. It says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Don't talk anyhow in your home. Talk, words are powerful. Words are powerful. And in this rule of engagement number one, I want two of you to sit down before I come in the next video to ask yourselves, are we abiding by this rule of engagement? If the answer is no, you need to do something about it. Now, but if you are finding it a bit difficult, also I want you to check, how is our relationship with God? Because everything actually stems from your relationship with God and um, how you are also endeavoring to live by God's word. All right? I know the Lord will help you strengthen your marriage, make it better than you ever dreamed possible. All right? So thank you for watching today. I am Vera Uroba. And please like this video, share it. Please make your comments. And above all, subscribe to my channel. God bless you. I'll see you in my next video.